And the second tragedy associated with the lighthouse was the, a young lad, um, David O'Byrne, David O'Byrne and his brother um, Plunkett. They were both sent to the local farmer for potatoes for the dinner, but they went off playing as it would have been their playground before they got to the farmer. And Plunkett came back to tell that his brother was washed off the cliff as well. But that was the two, two tragedies associated. But to do with the little David O'Byrne case, the brothers put a little memorial plaque up here at the entrance. You see a nice stone. Oh, the memorial plaque. Yeah. Yes. And it was in the year 2000, 50 years after David O'Byrne was washed off the cliff. Just a little memorial stone. And we all came around, stood around to say our prayers. And we sang a few hymns. And a couple of hours after that, David's mother passed away in Belfast. Oh. David's brothers came back to tell us that their mother passed away so peacefully, at ease in her heart, and happy that her little son will never be forgotten of Fannett Head. Oh. All right. We talk about the building of the Fannett Lighthouse and how the Fannett Lighthouse came about. In 1811, there was a British Navy vessel, the HMS Saldana. The HMS Saldana was out here off Fannett Head, but she hit a rock known locally as Carrick Donal. She made her way round the lock, rock, round Fannett Head to go up into Lost Swally for shelter. Her vessel was already damaged, but she hit the Swally Rock. When we're on the tower, we'll have a look at the Swally Rock. There was a loss of all the men on board the boat, which was 250 men. Because of that, the British Navy applied to the ballast board in Dublin to have a lighthouse built on Fannett Point. It was known then as Fannett Point. They started building the Fannett Head Lighthouse in 1815. It took two years to build it at a cost of £2,000. And here the sketch shows us what the Fannett Head Lighthouse was first like, the sketch of it. And today we have an extended tower here, it's 22 metres from base to the lantern room. From sea level, the light, from the sea level to the height of the light is 39 metres. Okay. So we'll be climbing up this tower, just a little light. <laughs> we've come across here and we'll talk about Lost Sully. We talk about the importance of Lost Sully and we talk about the commissioners of Irish Lights. Okay. We would class, I suppose we would class the Planet Head Lighters as a guardian to the law. Okay. She sits on the mouth of Lost Sully. Now, although it's not a harbour light, Lost Sully is actually a, a great harbour of refuge. But it's not a harbour light we have on our light, it's actually a sea light. We could talk about the Lost Sully. There's up to 60 shipwrecks alone in the bed of Lost Sully. We can talk a little bit of history of, of top of, above the water before we talk about the, the shipwrecks. Well, we'll just talk about World War I. During World War I, the British moved their grand fleet from Scapa Flow in Scotland and used Lost Sully as their naval base. Now, to give us an idea of what that would have been like, and what you could have went into Rathmullen, a local village, a couple of miles up the road, and you could have stepped on the battleships in Rathmullen and walked across on top of the ships and wow. cut off on the other side of the loch. And that allows people to visualise how right. busy it was. They were just there today. Yes. <laughs> and there were no boats at all. There were no boats. <laughs> yeah, it was quite busy back then. Yeah. All right. The reason they would have used us fully for, during World War I for its main base was because of the deep waters. Mm. The ships could go up the deep waters at a great shelter from the sea. And there was already Napoleonic forts built on both sides of Lost Wally. They had some forts, making six forts in total, with a battery at Rathmullen, the village that you were in today, a battery in Rathmullen with its lookout posts. So they were very safe from the, from the land. They were very quite safe from the shelter from the high seas. And they put a wire, a steel, a wire across the mouth of Lost Sully, and that stopped the German U boats from attacking them from underneath. So they were quite safe from underneath the water. That was the reason the British used Lost Sully. Yeah. Right. But we'll talk about the shipwrecks. I already mentioned the Saldana and the loss of 250 lives. We can talk about the Laurentic, there's always great interest in the Laurentic. The Laurentic was a passenger ship, she was going from Liverpool to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, with passengers, people who were emigrating looking for work. She would have been out off Fannett Head on the, on the shipping lane of Fannett Head. In January 1917, she had her passengers on board, 
475 passengers. Oh, but sorry, she was, but she was, she, I'll start again, okay? <laughs> I'll do another take on that, okay? <laughs> and Laurentic was a passenger ship going from Halifax, Nova Scotia, or going from Liverpool. Mm -hmm. I'll start again. <laughs> no, no, don't worry, don't worry about it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm getting used to the sort of humor like this now. <laughs> we'll talk about the Laurentic. The Laurentic was a passenger ship. She was bringing passengers, people who were emigrating long ago, from Liverpool. Out one here, she was out off Fallet Head on the shipping lane. Her passengers were going to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Canada, emigrating looking for work. Like any courier company today, she didn't come back empty handed. She took on a contract with England to bring arms back to England. In January 1917, she was leaving Liverpool. She had 475 passengers on board the boat. She also had payment for the arms to Canada. The payment was a gold bullion, and the gold bullion consisted of 3,211 gold bars. They were out here off Fallet Head on the shipping lane, heading off to Canada, and she hit the high seas, and there were people very ill on board. She came into Los Sully to let people off the boat, off the ship. But on her way out on that January morning, 1917, she didn't wait for the smaller boats to clear the area of German mines. She had two German mines just off at the Fanet Lighthouse here, and within one hour, the Laurentic had sunk to the bottom of the sea. From the 475 passengers on board the ship, 354 had lost their life. It took several years for a salvage operation to retrieve the gold. Two major salvage operations retrieved all but 22 gold bars. But perhaps, as we say locally, there's 22 gold bars unaccounted for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We talk we wash up while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the headquarters are here in the Pandit. <laughs> we don't just talk about big ships or the big loss of life. We talk about local boats. We talk about the small boats, the small loss of life. There was four local men lost their life from Ballyhorsky, the fishing, little fishing village in the townland of Ballyhorsky. There were, it was 21st of June 1927, it was the peak of the salmon season. The local fishermen was all out fishing for salmon. The seas got rough, they all made it back home by one little a boat, it was called a skiff, a timber boat called a skiff. The four men was lost at sea. One body was found and the other three bodies were never found. Okay. It's just a little tradition we still hold since 1927 that we continue to have a little memorial mass to remember the four men every couple of years on the pier that they left to head out to, for their, to, to fish and as long as that we have the blessing of the boats. Okay. We just highlight that as our tradition that we still hold to this day. We talk about the commissioners of Irish Lights and the role the commissioners of the Irish Lights play. There's 72 working lighthouses in Ireland. Uh, from that 72 working lighthouses, there's 12 of them open to the public. We're under the branch of the great lighthouses of Ireland. Some of them are open for accommodation only, and some of them have tours here in the Fanet Head Lighthouse. We have three apartments that we have to do summer lettings, and we do our tour paving during, it will be during the week. Yeah. All right. The commissioners of Irish Lights and what they do and the role they play and how they keep us safe. They keep us safe at sea, that is their motto, safely at sea and keeping people safe at sea. We have to say thank you to the commissioners of Irish Lights for allowing us into a working lighthouse today and also allowing us up into the lantern room to have a look at the workings of the lighthouse. Okay. Like I said, there's the 12 of them open to the public under the branch of the Great Lighthouse of Ireland. Along with their motto, keeping us safe at sea, what they do is maintenance at sea. They maintain their light, they keep our light lit in our lantern room, they keep the light in all the lighthouses around Ireland. They maintain our boys at sea. There's over 4,000 local aids to navigation, all of them maintained by the Commissioners of Irish Lights. How important it is that they never let a boy slip down onto the water be laden, be laden down with the weight of shells that may bob underneath the water. They continue to maintain them because that boy marks that rock. It can never happen. 
It's a tragedy waiting to happen if it does, so they can never happen. That's the role of the commissioners of various rights. Along with that, they're constantly updating, modernising our technology. In 1817, when the light was first lit in the Fanet Head Lighthouse, it was lit with seven wicks and lit with oil from a, oil from a sperm wheel. We moved on to paraffin oil. In 1975, electricity came here and in 1983 it was automated. We have a look at the, at the large bulbs that we have here and now the modern technology that brought us forward now to the small halogen lights that light our lighthouse today. All modern technology that the Commissioners of Irish Lights have continued to be on top of. And our last plaque we'll talk about next stop in America. <laughs> yeah. What our lighthouses means to everybody. For many years we came as far as the gate. We took our photographs at the gate because we were, we were never open to the public. 